UK, Canada, France and New Zealand also denounced the decision. Some fear other countries may now be encouraged to follow suit. Joining us now is Elizabeth Shackelford. She is an award-winning former diplomat with the U.S. State Department. She is a senior fellow on the Chicago Council of Foreign Relations. Thank you so much for being with us. Good morning. The world, uh, the U.S., I should say, has seen as a leader on this front. Uh, and that was that case for a long time, right? It was. It has been the case for a long time, though our friends overseas know that, have known for a long time as well that this right was at risk here in the United States. Elizabeth, what do we know about other countries that have outright banned uh, abortion and what do they have in common? Well, there's there's not a large number of countries that have outright banned. I mean, it, but the most important thing to note is the trend that we've been seeing over the past, recent decades. And at this stage, according to the Center for Reproductive Rights, there are only three countries that have rolled back reproductive rights since 1994. Now, with the decision this week in the United States, we now make it the fourth uh, country, while 59 countries in that same period of time have expanded reproductive rights. So it's about where the trajectory is going. And unfortunately, you know, whether or not we like it, where America goes, many other tend to follow. We have been a leader in human rights globally. We certainly put ourselves out there as that. So when we start rolling back rights, there's a real fear, not just that other countries will continue uh, to do that, but that they'll use the U.S. move as an excuse to do so. I was wondering, as you know, based on your experience as a former diplomat, what was it that you witnessed uh, in Europe? Were they generally ahead of us on this? Well, in Europe, they're generally ahead of the United States on many women's rights issues. But I will say I served in Poland, and that is a place where uh, it's one of the three countries in, in recent history where they have rolled back those rights. Um, but that's certainly um, not the trend across Europe. Europe has been leading us on women's rights for a long time. Uh, but in Poland, we have seen that since that um, since that rollback a few years ago with a more uh, a much more uh, conservative government um, that's uh, quite anti-women's rights, uh, we've seen that there's been a tremendous amount of protest in that country over that. And that other countries in Europe have been uh, really ensuring that those rights are enshrined and protected. And what do we know globally about access to abortions and the impact uh, that that can have on women's health care overall? Well, I mean, you know, banning abortion certainly doesn't make uh, doesn't make abortion stop happening. It just makes safe abortion stop happening. And you've seen some countries um, like, you know, let's say Russia, where they're looking at issues of how do we reduce the number of abortions, but less so about how do we ban them, because they're looking at issues such as, uh, you know, trying to preserve uh, their population growth. Um, but most of the places where it's most at risk are places where you have reduced women's rights overall. And once you start seeing uh, reproductive rights being reduced, you, you often see um, um, a trend in other rights for women. And the other countries around the world where they are banned are places where women do not have a wide variety of rights. And so that's really the fear. The fear is that this is just a first step and also that it really does um, impede women's health care overall. I mean, you see places where, with uh, high rates of maternal mortality, and I fear that that's going to be something that we start to see more of here. We already are not a leader in maternal um, in maternal health care. Um, uh, our health care system is pretty, um, pretty poor among the industrialized states of the world. So this is just going to be another another ding for us in that in that record. Leaders of the UK, France, uh, New Zealand are denouncing the Supreme Court decision. Uh, they have expressed fears that the world is moving backwards on this issue. Uh, the WHO has also called this disappointing. Is there anything that the WHO could do on this front? I mean, at this stage, it's really about just um, embarrassing the United States with re with regard to our human rights issues. Um, it is also very embarrassing that our NATO, NATO allies have been condemning this. I mean, good on them, as they should, but these are states with whom we purportedly share values as liberal democracies. But one thing that I want to make sure people understand is that this isn't just about human rights. It's also about how our democracy is functioning. I mean, what we've seen over the past week is that six unelected, wholly unaccountable, unaccountable individuals have decided to take Away rights that Americans have for almost half a century. How democratic does that look? It's against the will and belief of the vast majority of the American people. Um, it's rolling back rights that we have had. Um, and it doesn't look like a particularly democratic move for a country that purports to be, uh, you know, a beacon of democracy around the world. Elizabeth Shackelford, former diplomat, thank you so much for your insight. Thank you for having me.